Hi guys, so today's tutorial is based off a skill builder explaining the relationship between a light source, an object, and its shadow. So if you are curious as to what a light source is, a light source can mean a flashlight, sunlight, or indirect light, so long as the light affects the object that you are looking at. Now in this example, I'm using my dry erase board to show you a different scale from dark to lightest. And we'll kind of start dissecting our object in just a few moments. But for just a second, I want you to take a look at what happens when you take your light source, which is my spotlight. And if I move my spotlight, there are certain things that are happening. If I get close, if I get far, if I get an angle above or an angle that's closer to being down here. Either way, what you'll start to kind of hopefully notice is that wherever my light source is, my shadow will always be on the opposite side. So in this example, it's a little harder because I have a shiny background, but if I were to have my direct light above it, my shadow can only be so big, as you can see. It is slightly bigger than the object because it is round, but it really won't get much bigger depending on how close my light source is. So. I'm going to kind of put this to the side. We're going to learn to dissect our object based off our scale below. Now, if one is the brightest point on our object and 10 is the darkest, we need to figure out where those points are so that we can break down everything else. So if you can see carefully, the light source is bouncing off our object and the brightest point is here. The reason you can tell is because in the video, it's white even though we know the orange is orange, because of how much light is directed at this one particular spot, this area is considered white. So if that is our brightest point, that is our number one. Then most people, we like to think that our shadow is our darkest. But if you look really carefully, guys, wherever the object directly touches the surface, this little part right here, that is our darkest point, which is our 10. Once we know these two points, it's easier to kind of break down everything else. So if the point underneath the object is considered number 10, what would this be considered? Would you consider that a nine, an eight, a seven? It depends on your observation. But for the fun, I'm going to use my colored markers so we can kind of outline each of these sections because the shadow is actually broken down a lot more than you see. So I'm gonna outline my shadow as best I can. All right, so we have the big section here. I'm gonna use another marker to show the halo effect that's happening with your shadow. So even though that's the main part, you still kind of have like this slightly faded fuzzy area right about here. And then it can kind of continue fading out here. So even though our light source is all the way over here, our shadow is extended. And as it extends, it starts to gradually get lighter. So now that we kind of have our shadow here, let's talk about our orange. If we know that this is the lightest point on it, you'll start to notice that this area is probably closer to, instead of maybe a two, maybe it's almost like a three. You still have some color in this area, but it's not super white. As you start to break this down, you go kind of from a one, maybe a two, a three, a four, maybe a, I would say this area is actually darkest, probably a little bit darker truthfully than the points over here. So if that's the case, I would say this point is maybe closer to about a six, while this area is maybe closer to a four and a five. The reason why is because this object is round and light is bending around and thus the shadows are starting to show that round depth. The reason this is important to observe, guys, is that when you're drawing this, your circle is going to look round. But what makes it look like it's three-dimensional is how you can observe and dissect your shadows and your highlights. So in this exercise, what I'd like you to try and do is take this object that you see on my board, and I want you to draw it out and try shading. Just go for it. Don't try to overthink it. Use your smudger, use your eraser. Remember, 
a smudger, a long little paper roll, is able to blend out your things so everything looks nice and smooth, while an eraser creates highlights, such as if you want to get this super wide after you've already blended all of this other area on here, you can go back with an eraser and erase all this out so it has a nice, clean, white area. Let's say that your shadow looks a little fuzzy out here and you want to have this kind of nice, crisp look as it shows on the screen. Go back with an eraser and just kind of clean up this nice little oval. If you have any questions, please give me an email or ask me in class. But like I said, with this skill builder, I want you to just try. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's worth at least trying to get used to doing from one to 10. And that's it. Other than that, I hope y'all have a great day.